In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can build out your own custom chatbot in Langchain in Next.js. So what I'm gonna be showing you is a way that you can set up a chatbot without having to embed or create vectors of all the different information that you wanna interact with. What we're gonna be using in this video is the OpenAI function calling feature where, you're, where you'll be able to ping different APIs that you wanna access. So if I just demonstrate how this can work is if I just say, what is the price of Bitcoin? Now I use this because it's just a free API that anyone can use to get up and running. It doesn't even need uh, an API key to get started. And you can see what it's doing under the hood is it's going out, reaching out for that uh, cryptocurrency price and returning me the value. And the other thing that you can do is, let's say, what is the price of Bitcoin in Canadian dollars? So it takes in two arguments, one's required, one's optional. You, so you can also pass in the currency type uh, in this example. But the main thing with this, it's not really to build out and show you how to build out you know, a, a chatbot where you're interacting with cryptocurrency prices and whatnot. It's really to show you how to scaffold out, how to reach out to APIs that you have, whether they're proprietary or an idea you have, if you could ingest data from a different API or different data source. So all I'll show you all of that um, behind the hood. We're going to be using a ton of different things within Langchain, but the code itself is going to be pretty uh, small and reusable. So if you wanna be able to take this and fork it and use it however you want, uh, feel free. Now, the other thing I'm gonna quickly incorporate in the project is Langsmith. Now, Langsmith is something I encourage you to use in your Langchain projects. It gives you a high level overview of things like, you know, how many times that the chatbot has run uh, or, or your application. It doesn't necessarily just need to be a chatbot, obviously. How many tokens have been used? Uh, it can show you all sorts of high-level details. So you can see what I just ran here. I shouldn't even say high-level, just a whole lot of detail. Uh, it shows you the metadata that's passed back and forth between the LLM uh, in and out. Uh, it shows you the tools that are used, shows you the response times of everything, and it can even show you like the nuances of every token that is being used, whether it's uh, completion tokens or the prompt tokens themselves. So super great. I encourage you, like I said, all your lang chain applications, I'd encourage you to use this. So the first thing that we're gonna do, we're gonna dive into it. We're gonna open up our VS Code. Now, the first thing I'm gonna have you do is head over to this link. Um, so this link is a AI repository from Vercel, and it gives you the ability to use a number of different frameworks very, very easily. So you can see here, if I just go to the examples, so in this one, I'm using the next uh, Lang chain example here, but say if you want to use Nuxt or another uh, framework, what I'm about to show you should work pretty seamlessly. So I'm not going to actually touch the UI layer. I'm just going to touch the back end. So we're going to go in here. Now you can just run through these steps here. So MPX, Yarn, uh, PNPM, uh, whatever you'd like to do. Um, just go ahead, copy that, paste it in the terminal, and then once you have that, you should have a directory structure like this. So once you have it, just go ahead and npm install everything. Now the one thing I'd encourage you to do is just uh, npm or pnpm, whatever command you chose, upgrade Langchain at latest, just so you have the latest version of Langchain. So I noticed within the repository, sometimes some of those versions fall out of date with Langchain. So once you have that set up, you can just go over to the OpenAI website and get your API key. So super straightforward, just make an account. You, you'll probably be able to get some credits for free off the bat if you haven't used it yet. You can go in, copy your key, and then once you have your key, you can go within the .env.local.example and you can paste it in within the OpenAI API key spot. So next within Langsmith, so if you head over to uh, Langsmith here, if you just go ahead and go through the flow, make a new project, uh, click TypeScript, you'll be able to get all the environment variables that you need. And then once you have everything within your .env, so you can just paste in the four, gives you a little block you can copy, you can go ahead and get your API key just from the bottom left. 
So once you have that, that's all you need to do to have LangSmith running in the background and then you can sort of forget about it. You don't need to declare it within the JavaScript or anything, it's just there. So once we have that, the one place within our application that we're gonna be working from here is within the route. So I'm not gonna to touch the actual UI layer, like I said, but uh, if you want to edit this, because it's very simple, uh, just feel free uh, once, once the backend's all set up. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to import some packages here. Now I'm going to run through these quickly, but I'll touch on them a little bit more as we get into when we actually use them all. So we're going to be using the dynamic tool and then the dynamic structured tool. So one takes in a string, the other takes in an object for uh, an argument. Um, so one is going to be very simple in this example, and then one's going to be a bit more involved. So the dynamic structured tool, that's what I used to run through that cryptocurrency example. And then I'll show you a simpler example as well. So we're going to be using the chat OpenAI class. This is going to be how we actually interact with the OpenAI model. Then the agent that we're going to use is the initialize agent executor with options agent. And then we're going to specify the OpenAI functions once we actually get uh, to using that. Then we're gonna be using the Wikipedia query run tool. So I'm gonna show you where and how you can use built-in tools if you don't want to use your own or if you just wanna see what's also included in Langchain. Then for the package that we pulled down, part of the reason why I chose to use this as a starting off point is to be able to use that streaming back and forth and just have a very simple example you can build off of. So that's what this repo does really well is that streaming back and forth between the different frameworks that it has set up. Then we're gonna be incorporating the Zod library for schema validation. So I'll touch on this. Uh, once we actually get here, and it should make a little bit more sense if you haven't used Zod before. Then within the template, when you pull it down, so because it is built by Vercel, you'll see that there is this uh, export to run as Edge. So once you're done and set up with this, if you do want to deploy it, it should be pretty straightforward to go ahead and deploy on Vercel. Okay, so once you have this file, so if you're following along, you can go through and just remove everything within post and we'll just go through line by line everything that we need to set up in this example. So the first thing we're gonna do, pretty straightforward, is just gonna extract and destructure the incoming request from the front end. Next, we're going to initialize the chatbot. Here you can specify the temperature, uh, streaming, all sorts of the different OpenAI function options. You can just uh, specify within the object here. Now the I'm using the Wikipedia query tool just to demonstrate the different tools that you can reach for. So I'm familiar with this one because this is one that I added in the Node.js implementation of Langchain. So I'm most familiar with this one. I'm not as familiar with the other ones, just not having used them as much. It's pretty simple. It will give you the top results. So you can specify, say you want the top two results, you can change that to two, and then the length of the document that's returned. Now, the one thing to note is I'm using a relatively short length uh, because the thing you have to consider is if you just jack this up to say 3000, you're gonna be passing those tokens into the LLM back and forth. So. Just to be mindful of that, I found for something like 300, it will give you a generally a short response about something um, to be able to inform the context of the LLM. So an example of that is if you say, what is Langchain? So if you did that in uh, ChatGPT, it might give you an answer like Langchain is a blockchain project or something that's not true. Whereas this, if you run this tool, it will have that uh, layer of sort of validation where it reaches out to the Langchain Wikipedia page and just gives you that, that first little blurb of text from the page. Okay, so next, this is going to be the simplest example. So this is sort of the simplest custom tool of the function that is passed into the LLM. So if I just go back to our application here just briefly and I say what is foo oh not food if 
I just go side by side. So you see it triggered the foo function and foo is a demo for YouTube and you see the value of food. Oops, I even had a typo in here, but it still, it still caught it. Uh, this is a demo for YouTube. So very simple. We just have the function name. Uh, we have the description of what the function does. Now, the reason why the description is important is that is how the LLM is informed of what the function can do. And it becomes even more important in the next step where if you have structured data and a structured tool where you want to accept an object of arguments uh, and you need to specify those arguments and whatnot. So there's a few other pieces outside of just writing the function that you need to do to have it interact with the LLM and have it play nice. And that is what this example I aim to sort of show you. So this one, I just called it fetch crypto price. Uh, the description fetches the current price of a specified uh, cryptocurrency and then there's the function itself so we're going to log out uh, here's the options that it was passed and you can see in my examples the, there's the currency when i uh, specified the canadian currency uh, and i didn't you saw i didn't put cad right i just wrote canadian and it passed it in you can put in a different crypto name, you can put in Ethereum or whatever you see fit. And then I use this just because it's a simple URL and no API key. So in this step, you don't need to reach out for an API key to use it. You can just reach out and ping this. So simple fetch request to the URL, get the response, and then I'm returning the crypto name and then the price itself. So next, we're just gonna declare all the tools that we're gonna be using in our uh, example here. So we're going to be using Wikipedia, we're going to be using uh, foo and fetch crypto price. Then here is where we're going to actually establish which agent type that we're going to use. So as I mentioned, we're going to be using the OpenAI function uh, agent executor. So it's going to handle all that responses in and out. If there's multiple um, functions that need to run. So if I say what is the value of foo and the value of bitcoin in lira so you see in some examples um, if you want to have multiple functions invoked within one response you can do that so you see okay the value of foo is this is a demo for youtube and the value of bitcoin in lira is that. So just to show you how you can use this and it's not isolated to using one function at a time. Okay, so next this is we're just going to extract the most recent message with what we're going to be passing in here. So again, you can sort of see change this as you see fit. Uh, I'm sort of using just a small example to try and use sort of as few tokens as possible just to be mindful of if you're running this and testing it out. I uh, just want to keep it as straightforward and to the point. So then here, this is going to be where we actually execute the agent. So it's going to run in the background with the input from the user. Then this is going to be how we break up that response from the agent executor. So the thing with Langchain is streaming is something that is becoming more and more readily available. Now, right now within the Node.js implementation, I didn't find a way to stream out the results from an agent that worked as I uh, wanted. So essentially all this is doing is it's creating a readable stream and it's creating that familiar output where it's not a consistent stream where it's just like, you know, like painting a line across the screen. It will give you a, a bit of randomness with the, those outputs. So it sort of feels like it's streaming right out to the UI. And then simply all that we have to do is just return that response within this uh, streaming text response class that is built within the AI library here. And then that's pretty much it. You're off to the races. You can take this, uh, swap out the functions. You can add multiple dynamic tools or multiple tools within uh, the implementation of Langchain that they have. Now, if you actually want to find the tools for uh, Langchain as an example, you can just go over 
to the Langchain slash tools. And then if you just take a look here, you can see a number of the tools that are available. So a number of them do require API keys. A lot of them do have free tiers that you can access with an API key. So I encourage you take a look at here at what's already pre-built. Maybe you don't need to build it uh, yourself. Um, you could potentially just reach for one of these. But yeah, I just wanted to show an example of say if you did want to write your own functions and build your own custom agent, I wanted to have a simple implementation and boilerplate. So you could just come in here, remove everything within the function, swap out the name schema, and just get off to the races with building out your own custom chatbot. So if you are curious on how to build out a chatbot where you do embed data or you have a lot of data and you want to do that uh, similarity search between documents and whatnot, I'll link some a uh, couple of videos in the description uh, and within the video here, which you can click on. Uh, but otherwise, if you found this video useful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And otherwise, until the next one.